listeners, if you can please, you know, if there are any recent cases or examples that you would like to share with us where enforcement actions have been taken against violators. Yeah, so the the sad reality of the fact is, although the employer is the petitioner and the employer is the only one that communicates, you know, the, with the agency about the job, mm -hmm. they don't really have any enforcement power over the the, uh, the employer at USCIS. The Department of Labor does, but USCIS really has no no impact there. Um, so. All of USCIS's enforcement activity is really aimed at penalizing and eliminating the worker who's never done anything wrong in this process, but they're really trying to hurt their employer. Um, they've created a team of people within USCIS that do nothing but look at cap H-1Bs right before you adjust status, looking mm -hmm. for a way to eliminate them you know, and deny their I-140 or, or revoke their cap, so they have to leave. So there is a, a lot going on in terms of their enforcement strategy that is going to be problematic in the future. Okay, okay. All right. Um, would you like to elaborate on it a bit? So specialty occupations will be difficult to define. It, if the rules is currently drafted in the proposed rule, mm -hmm. your specialty occupation is going to be in the eye of the beholder of the adjudicator. Whatever the adjudicator thinks is the totality of the circumstances is what they'll be basing it on, which means there's no really bright rules that are clear for everybody to follow and create predictability. So I, I expect to see a lot of unpredictability with specialty occupations issues. The other main thrust of the H-1B reg mm -hmm. is changing the, <clears throat> excuse me, changing the bona fide, requiring a bona fide job offer in order to get an H-1B. What that bona fide job offer means is a good question. So if you look at the way the statute and the regulations are created, mm -hmm. the employer makes an offer, they file the LCA, the petition gets approved, and they have a legal liability to pay, regardless mm -hmm. of how much you've got to do. And if you don't pay, you have you can go to the Department of Labor and you can get back wages, and, and they're pretty effective that way. Um, so, uh, sorry. Uh, the, what USCIS is doing is when they find evidence in a site visit that wages haven't been fully paid. The, the worst example I've seen is somebody is, whose LCA was for 120 a year mm -hmm. and their W-2 was 1,000 or 119,000. So it's off by a thousand. Could have been a lot of legitimate reasons for that. Mm -hmm. They still revoked his visa. So they revoked his H-1B visa because the employer's actions. It, it completely negates the, the right that employees have mm -hmm. to the Department of Labor, because if they go to the Department of Labor, they run the risk of USCIS revoking their petition. So it, you know, the, the system would work better if USCIS would work with people and look to protect employees, but they're not looking to protect employees. They're looking to, to get them out. Are you an IT consultant seeking a new opportunity? We offer job placement services for U.S. citizens, green cards, EADs, and visa holders. We also sponsor various work visas like H-1B, E3, TN, and green cards. 20 plus years of experience in the industry. Exceptional employee benefits. Highly rated by our employees global presence with 200 plus recruiters and direct clients connect with us call us on the number 833-412-8472 or mail us at support at higheritpeople.com or visit our website www.higheritpeople.com